Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Today we're going to talk, be talking about the U.S. labor force, and we're really going to be answering three basic questions. Number one, what do people look for in a job? Two, what are the trends that um, have occurred and are occurring in the U.S. labor market? And question number three is, how do the supply and demand for uh, labor affect wages? So let's go ahead and talk about what the U.S. labor force is. To be considered a part of the U.S. labor force, you must meet two conditions. Number one, you must be at least 16 years old. And number two, you must be working or actively looking for work. If you do not meet both of those conditions, you are not considered in the U.S. labor force. Now, when we're talking about the U.S. labor force, we're talking about a lot of people. In 2010, there were 158 million people in the U.S. labor force, according to the Bureau of Labor Statistics. All right, now let's go ahead and talk about entering the labor force and what people look for when they are entering the labor force. So when people are considering looking for a job, they consider a variety of factors. And probably the most important is what are the wages for that job? What are the jobs in demand? And what are the supply of different types of workers? It's important to understand, ladies and gentlemen, that is the supply and demand for labor that helps set wages. So for example, if an occupation has lots of workers and few available jobs, you'll have very low pay because the quantity supplied of labor is so much greater than the quantity demanded of labor, the pay is going to be pretty low. Now, if you have a job where there are lots of available jobs and few who can actually do the job, you are going to have very high wages. Okay, because the quantity supplied of labor is less than the quantity demanded of labor, you are going to have very high wages. So it is the supply and demand for labor that helps set wages. Now some other things that businesses are going to look, uh, excuse me, people are going to look for when they're looking for a job. Um, they want to make sure they have the skills that are necessary for that job. They want to check the working conditions. They want to check out the location. People obviously would like to work um, near where they live. And intrinsic rewards. What are some of the non-monetary reasons for working at a particular job? Does the <clears throat> job give you a sense of, of pride and fulfillment, for example? Another thing that's important to keep in mind is what, when you're looking for a job, is what careers have what's called derived demand. So derived demand is the demand for workers and other resources that's derived or follows from consumers' demand for a good. Okay, so you got to think, what, what careers, what industries a few years out or right now, okay, depending on when you're planning on entering into the labor force, are going to be hiring. What industries are going to be expanding and hiring? Um, some examples of um, jobs that have some derived demand right now, healthcare, jobs in healthcare are a good example. Uh, you've got the baby, baby boomers who are growing older and they'll need more health care. And so they are going to demand lots of health care. So there is a derived demand for jobs in health care. Lots of people buy technology. Everybody has their gadget nowadays. So therefore, there's going to be a lot of derived demand for working in um, the technology sector. Okay, so you definitely want to keep in, in mind what kind of jobs have derived demand when you're looking for, uh, when you're thinking about a potential career. All right, one other trend that you're seeing um, is you're seeing that we are moving in, in the past, the United States economy has moved away 
from being very um, labor intensive. Okay, producing goods primarily through human and animal power. For example, to the left you see the farmer, and moving to a more capital-intensive economy, uh, where we're more dependent on machines to produce goods, this is particularly computers. All right, another trend you will see is more women in the labor force. Okay, so this is another major trend you've seen over the past century. All right, so from industrialization and the Industrial Revolution, uh, there's been an increase in the number of women paid for labor. Uh, more and more women are working outside the home. Um, historically, this has happened a lot during times of war, World War I, World War II, uh, and now it's happening uh, more mostly due to improved educational opportunities, smaller family sizes, and so forth. All right, so let's take a look at another trend here, another labor force trend that's been occurring over the past century, and that is higher education levels. The U.S. labor force is better educated, and employers are demanding that their employees be better, better educated. There is a direct relationship between a worker's level of education and his or her income. So the statistics show that if you have more education, on average, you're going to be earning more money. You're also much more likely to find a job. The unemployment rate for those that have an education is much lower than those who do not. Okay? You see more and more people completing college as well. And there are statistics and there are numbers that will back this up, as we will see. All right, so let's take a look at some of those numbers. Um, this is from the Current Population Survey. That comes from the Bureau of Labor Statistics uh, from 2009. Uh, if you look to the right, it talks about the median weekly earnings in 2009. Um, an average for all workers. So you can see if uh, you grow up out of high school, you're going to earn about $454 a week back in 2009. Uh, if you have your bachelor's degree, you're earning double that, $1,025 a week on average. A doctoral degree, you're earning even more than that at 1532 So education does pay. In addition, you're much more likely to find a job. Less than a high school diploma in 2009, almost a 15% unemployment rate. And then with the bachelor's degree, um, you have 5.2% unemployment rate. So you're much more likely to find a job if you have an education, and you're, on average, going to be paid more. So keep that in mind as you are pursuing your education. All right, some other numbers here. Uh, this, here's some average annual earnings by education level from 2004. Once again, from the U.S. Census Bureau. High school diploma, 28,645. Uh, bachelor's degree, 51,554. Okay, so um, once again, more numbers showing that on average, education pays. Another trend you've seen over the past hundred years or so is um, more anti-discrimination and minimum wage laws being implemented by the government. A good example of that would be the Equal Pay Act of 1963. This said that employers must pay the same wages to male and female workers who perform the same job. You have the Civil Rights Act of 1964 which protects workers from discrimination based on race, sex, religion, or national origin. And then finally, you have the Fair Labor Standards Act, which established the minimum wage. And you can see back in the day, in 1938, when it was established, it was 40 cents an hour and has now gone up quite a bit. All right, so let's go ahead and answer these two questions. So for number one, which of the following is a trend in the labor market? 
And two, to be in the labor force, you must be what? So you can pause this if you like and take a look in your notes and answer it. And we'll move on to the summary. We're going to describe how the U.S. labor market has changed over the past hundred years. We've talked about a bunch of different trends that have, been, that have occurred over the last century. Describe some of those trends for me. And I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Have a wonderful evening.